Hello, this is Janet from JanetSandberg.com, and you're listening to the Phoenix Wisdom Podcast, the weekly show that talks to peers and professionals who open up about their darkest moments when they felt like ending it all, why they didn't, and how they transformed their lives in order to triumph over the darkness and despair. Please remember to subscribe if you'd like to hear more inspiring stories. Hello and welcome to the Phoenix Wisdom Podcast. I am your host, Janet Sandberg, and today we are joined by Justin Shaw, who is uh, joining us from the beautiful but not so sunny Phoenix today in Arizona. So Justin, take a minute. Tell me about yourself. Tell us about yourself. Well, there's a lot to tell, so I'm, I'll keep it. I'll keep it as short as possible. Um, so, I grew up in uh, the suburb of Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, kind of a different lifestyle, I guess, a little bit. Um, I don't know how much I want to get into, but uh, you know, it wasn't. It, it was a childhood childhood like of things that mattered in terms of physical things um money like you know like what was shown to me in love was in the physical form it was never told to me it was never you know like any 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 sort of thing like that so um i kind of had to figure out life on my own which is kind of what this whole my whole story and this whole book is about is just figuring out life and things on my own um it's 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 hard to get into the specifics exactly but um you know if you have any like certain questions that could guide me into there it's kind of a broad <laughs> um it's, it's a very broad subject you know yeah <laughs> okay well okay so you have a book we've learned what's the book called it's called Sorcery 101. So, um, and it's not spelled sorcery in the way you think it's spelled because like it's- Like witchcraft. Because you you can leave your cauldrons and wizard robes in the in, in the closet, right? Like, okay. like it has nothing to do with that. It's spelled S-O-U-R-C-E-R-Y. Oh, So Sorcery okay. 101. So source as in coming from source- Right. Is where you're gaining all your energy, which is where I've- found all my like healing all my true energy is is from this explainable thing that's out there right like yeah. this this thing that that can't be that can't be explained it, it can't it can't be it's 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 source it is it is this thing in which everything came from right um you know like the, the best thing is like I, I try to explain the big bang which is like you know, impossible to explain, but at the same time, like, if you think of, um, of an explosion in this world, it creates nothing but disorder. Like if, if you, if yeah. you think about that, like, like, you know, you think about any big explosion in the past hundred years, you know, World Trade Center, open hymns, they, they all can, they all have complete disillusion but the big bang was the biggest explosion in the history of the universe and it brought everything together in a, such a coherent way that it's undeniable that there is some sort of something pulling the strings right yeah. like there's just no way to say you can look at the big bang and be like okay so the biggest explosion in history produced complete cohesion like that doesn't yeah. make sense in a science aspect and that, right. that's what first got me going on this whole book and this whole thing so cool interesting we're going to come back to that but you mentioned healing so let's go back to the beginning and figured out why you needed to heal and obviously 
the reason that you're on this podcast is that at some point you were going through some pretty shitty stuff and thought that you didn't want to keep doing that. So let's, let's start back there. What was, what was going on? Okay. Um, yeah, no, I've, I've, I come from, so it's, it's, it's very illogical to compare, you know, like the forms, forms of abuse, right? Like, I, I feel like it's just stupid to say like, oh, well, you didn't have it as bad as I did, or maybe mm-hmm. I had it better than you did and you had it worse. And it's, it, that's, this is pointless. It's pointless. Yeah. Pain is pain. Pain exactly. is pain. And um, my pain may have been different from your viewers' pain. You know, like maybe your viewers have gone through a different type of pain. But, you know, neglect is certainly a type of pain. I I will never call my parents out for saying they, you know, like abused me in the traditional way. But I just, I wasn't hugged. I wasn't told I love you. I wasn't told these things. Right. Um, and so that, 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 that is a form of, 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 of abuse, you know, like, mm-hmm. so it's, it's hard to say, cause I, I really don't like calling out my people, you know, like for anything, but at the same time, it did affect me. I, I have to, I have to have a voice and say, yeah. you know, like these things did affect me for the rest of my life. Like I, I chose a different path because I wasn't told I was loved I wasn't told I was appreciated I wasn't told you know I could do anything you know I wasn't told these things so I didn't know I could do them Mm -hmm. so it like it it's I'm just trying to get out there to people like me that are you know like in this kind of same you know where where they're I'm kind of in the middle like, like I'm, I'm not in this, like I'm horribly abused. Oh, I was, you know, like beaten as a child. Oh, poor me. That's not me. But I also was not, oh, you were raised to believe you can do anything like, Mm -hmm. oh, you're, you're a champ, you know, like, so I'm like in this really weird middle stage where like, I wasn't abused, but I wasn't encouraged. Right. It's called, it's called childhood emotional neglect. Mm-hmm. and yeah. where you know your parents are doing the best that they can and you're fed and you're clothed and you're housed and you have games and you have toys and you have all everything that you need except for that emotional piece mm-hmm. um and yeah yeah it's it's a real thing and it it sucks and it it's it, yeah. really and it's really hard to explain because like you said we seem to have happy, healthy childhoods, and yet that piece was missing. And we weren't loved and, and encouraged and supported in the way that people need to be sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. That's okay. yeah, no, that's that's absolutely it. I, I I just feel like we're you know, people like me, and I, I have no idea you, your background, of course, I'm not going to include you in this, but people like me that, you know, are kind of caught in the middle, like, really suffer a lot, because we we don't, we don't get, like, the, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, like, you, you had an okay life, like, you, you didn't grow up in the streets. Mm-hmm. And then there's also this, like, well, you know, you, you had a pretty good life and like, so all these things come around. It's just, I just feel like there's, there's, a, there's a, there's a, there's a section of people that are suffering because they can't relate to one side or the other. Yes. And that's where I'm at. Yeah. Is like, I, I like, I can't relate to your extreme abuse and I can't, relate to your extreme you know like encouragement right you know like i i i I was just there just there right yeah i was just there so like i just i feel like i'm trying to speak to a big part of humanity but that one that's got kind of neglected over time because Mm -hmm. it's yeah 
because we're not on an in an extreme, you know. Yeah. Just... And I see you say we. And we. I see you say we. Yeah. I didn't say we. I didn't uh-huh. say we. You said we. I said we. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, um, there's a couple of books um written by Dr. Janice Webb, um, all about childhood emotional neglect. Um, and they're they're very good. So if you're somebody who feels like you're relating to what Justin and I are talking about by falling falling in this weird crack of of just you know having a great childhood but at the same time wondering why you're not flourishing um definitely recommend those books um but yeah so you were you were not flourishing as a child um and or as an adult <laughs> let's be or real as an adult um <laughs> How how old were you when you started having suicidal ideation, and why? I mean, I got I got addicted to drugs. I was I was I was really in that uh, zeitgeist of the um, Purdue Pharma, um, like that whole mid two thousands, like oxycotton. Mm. You you don't really understand what it is, right? Like, because of course, being my parents who they are, which we've already gone over, they didn't, you know, go over any of this stuff. You know, a- anything that came close to the heart or super emotional, they avoided completely. So I knew nothing about this stuff. So, you know, according to me, like, you know, if you if you get a pill from the pharmacy, it's good for you, right? You know, as of as of two thousand five, this was this was a fact. It was like. Oh, okay. Like, this is good for me. Like, here, take this. You'll feel better. You know, like friends in college and stuff like that. Like, you know, like this will make you feel better. Oh, okay, sure. But, um, you know, like the real true realities of it were not um, apparent until much later. And, you know, I had to go to rehab a few times, you know, like, and it, it, it just sucks that it had to come to that, you know, like, and, and I don't completely blame Purdue Pharma or the whole dope say, if you've seen dope sick, if you've seen, there's actually a couple other ones. There's one out Netflix. Now there's, there's several out on this, this topic, right? Mm-hmm. Like there are several out and everything you're saying is, is true. Um, but the fact is, it is like, in the very end, it, it it really is up to the parent to 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 sit down and say, okay, these things are good, these things are bad. Like, but just because a pharmacist says this may be good for you, maybe maybe not be so good. I don't know. Um, but that's that's kind of the conflict I've come into with with you know knowing that the medical community is for us but it's also kind of against us a little bit. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's really, it's really, you know, like if, if, if I'm in a car accident and my guts are spilling out, don't send me to a chiropractor. Right? right. You know, like, yes, you know, like send me to a good surgeon. That's going to like put that back together. But at the same time, like a chronic illness, something like you know, like a, a, the litany of chronic illnesses there are out there. Like, I, I don't believe that the medical community has a grasp on that. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where this book is coming into play. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I get that. So you were, you were heavily into drugs mm-hmm. and uh, where did that take you? Oh, dark places. Oh, dark places. Um, I mean, so I can explain the best way it is like to to talk about it is like that the high I got from drugs was nothing like the high I got from attention. So the first high I ever got was the high I I chased the rest of my life was, um, so I, again, we've gotten into, you know, I just wasn't paid attention to it at home. I was basically an only child even though i had brothers and sisters they were way older they were out of the house they i just was was there um so attention was always something i i relished um so so attention was something i sought out 
So once I started getting like more popular in high school, um, which I was not at all at first, I, I was not at all at first. It wasn't until my junior year when things got really bad at home that I decided to like do whatever I could to like get away from that, right? right. Like you want to get away from home. So I started uh, stealing alcohol um, and I would go into grocery stores and I would come out with the whole grocery cart full of alcohol. And um you know, I, I felt good about that because then I would, we would find a place that was, you know, like whoever's mom or dad was gone, you know, like we'd find that place and I'd bring all the stolen alcohol over to there and um, I'd be the king of the party. And that high, mm. I have never reached again. You know, that high was the high I was reaching. It's like when people talk about like, when they first smoke their first bit of crack or take their first shoot of heroin, that attention high, I have never received again because mm -hmm. like, and, but that's what I've been chasing. Right. You know, like that adulation from your mm -hmm. peers. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And that's, that's, that's what I've, that's what I've been chasing. And I've been trying to be okay with not having, um, but it's it it's it's tough. It's a day to day thing. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, alcohol in high school, drugs in college, mm -hmm. and just just trying trying to trying to feel good, right? That's the main thing is just, and that's what my book is about is like trying to feel good naturally. Like it's, it's called sorcery 101. It's about S O U R C E R Y. So it's misspelling on purpose. Cause you're not, you know, you can use your, <laughs> you can leave your rat tails and eyes of newt um, <laughs> in the closet because it, it it's not that kind of sorcery. It's like source source from like energy from source and being okay with that energy. Like there are plenty of days when that energy does not at all match the attention I was getting, you know, from these parties. But yeah. at the same time, like it it can sustain you and it can be a more even keeled form of energy as opposed to just like. I, I don't extreme like extreme high is an extreme. I don't. High. Yeah. I'm over this, but like, yeah. over this, this extreme high, this extreme low, this extreme high. I, I, I don't want to do it anymore. Like I I'm, I'm okay with just being in the middle. So that's what this, this book is about. Um, it's, it's got 13 rungs to higher conscious elevation. So it's just something that's come to me and, you know, I, my horrible days lying in bed alone, I suppose, but uh, it's, it really is, it, it really is something special. Like it, it really is like these, there's 13 things and there's 13 things for a purpose. 13 in the tarot cards is, is, is the number for transformation. So there's 13 things in this book that are extremely important and um, being someone who's struggled with addiction my whole life, of course, I've been involved in AA, um, you know, the 12 steps was the kind of like, well, what if I could come up with something that's like, like the 12 steps? But the thing is, with the 12 steps is you have to work them in order. Right. Now, mine, yeah, mine, you don't have to work in order. They're all equally as important. Um but it was it came from the inspiration of of kind of the the, the 12 steps of like, you know, like what's something else I could, you know, like that, that it was came up with in 1926 or something. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it was so like why, why don't we have, why don't we have like a little bit of a revision, something <laughs> that's not so rigid and structured, you yeah. know, like that can, that can have, you know, like you can just, you can just kind of accept or not, you know, right. like, you know, the thing with the 12 steps is you work them in order and that's, that's the way it is. Like with my 13 rungs, it's like accept or deny. It's it's up to you. Like it's 
it's your call. But these 13 things have become very crucial in living a, like a decent, happy life for me, for, for certain, for certain. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad you found that and you're sharing it with the rest of us. Um, can you talk a little bit about your lowest low, like when you hit rock bottom, when you <laughs> thought about ending your life, um, what, what happened? I laugh, but it's not funny. Um, yeah, no, there was, there was a point at which I was in, uh, I was living in Los Angeles and, um, I'd gone over there because, and, and part of what, what makes my whole thing really cool is that I have a comedic background. I, I, you know, like I used to do stand up comedy. I moved to Los Angeles in 2008, right before the crash, um, to be a comedian. And, um, you know, I have a very comedic outlook on life, which, which has helped in this book immensely because like this book is not only like gonna, you know, kind of help transform, but it, it's also gonna make you laugh. Um, so it's, when I was in Los Angeles, the lowest of low, I mean, like I, I graduated college here in 2006, ASU, and decided that I wanted to be uh, in the entertainment industry, the comedian, whatever. Um, so shortly afterwards, I think I got a job here maybe for a little bit. Um, I moved over there and um, I moved in with an ex-girlfriend, great decision. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she was an ex-girlfriend at that time too, like really good call. Um, so obviously that didn't work out, but like I was going to auditions and I had probably, you know, maybe four or five like stand up com com like comic auditions that a couple of them I had, I had felt real good about. But um, the last couple I went to just blitzed. I mean, like it was either on alcohol or uh, Xanax or I mean, anxiety is something I've suffered from my entire life. Um, so those last couple were kind of like the sign of, you know, like maybe it's time to make a change. So I called my family. They got me into a rehab center there in um, California. It was one of Dr. Drew's centers. It wasn't, um, it wasn't the main one there, uh, but uh, it was one of Dr. Drew's centers. So it was um, interesting because I was in there with a couple people that I knew from TV and movies, um, which was, which was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly can't call them out, but um, it just, it, it was the first time I got introduced to that atmosphere. And then I, I went into a uh, halfway house. But after that, I've, you know, like you run into people at these halfway houses that are not on board with being clean. So I, 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 I got on with one of them and um, I was kicked out of the halfway house. And I spent a couple nights, very cold nights, um, in the Los Angeles kind of community. I don't know what you call it. Kind of the like East Los Angeles, I guess you'd say, um, kind of Azusa. Um, and those were kind of my lowest times. Those were, I mean, you know, when you're when you're on a park bench and you're not, you know, my mother could have saved me. My mother, like she could have, she would have jumped in and said, okay, I'll get you a hotel. But I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't want to call her. I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to worry her. I didn't, she's, she's since deceased about five years ago. Um, but like, yeah, I could have called her and I could have got a hotel room and I could have done these things, but I didn't, I would have rather suffer myself than have her worry. So I just put it off as long as I could until eventually I couldn't do it anymore. Um, but I would say those are definitely 
at the times I'm trying to get people to avoid, I suppose. Right. Yeah. 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 And it's, it comes back to that whole thing. Like when we're struggling, we don't want to be a burden to those around us, even though mm. most of the time they would, you know, jump in to help us in a second, but we don't want to worry them. We don't want to put them out. We don't want to burden them with, with our troubles, even though if you ask them, they would be, it's not a burden at all. Um, mm -hmm. But there's always that disconnect when we're when we're at our at our lowest when we really really need people we somehow convince ourselves that we don't and that you know we can just muscle through and do it on our own and um that's the dangerous place because sometimes we can't and then we you know our our thoughts often lead us to you know well maybe it would just be better off if i weren't here at all and exactly. everybody else would I'd... be better off if i weren't here at all and... Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I relate to anyone that has given up. Yeah. I don't see them as a quitter. I just, no, it's, just... I, I, I see them as exactly like I am. It's like, wow, you know, you got to that point, huh? Like I was, I was almost at that point, but then I drew myself back, you know, like, yeah. but, but I could easily see myself getting beyond, you know, that yeah. point. So what, it's... what made you come back? My family, I, I have I have a really great family, and um, I, I it's 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 something that really is close to my heart. And um, you know, I'm I, I'm actually a, a father now. I'm having issues with um, the baby mama, but um, you know, like I, I have a I have a toddler. I haven't seen in a while, but. Um, you know, I have also also a lot of uh, nieces and nephews that um, are very, very important to me. So, it it's 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 just it's just a matter of like not giving up. I guess yeah. is just that's really what it is. Is just like. There's some important people in my life and I have a great dog too. And um, it's just a matter of not giving up. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, I think what it is for a lot of us. It's not even that we can necessarily see a better future for ourselves. It's that, again, not burdening other people. Like we don't want to burden them and tell them that we're doing really bad, but it's even more of a burden if we're not here anymore, mm -hmm. right? And so we want to stay here for those that we love. We want to stay here for, you know, our, our kids or our parents or our dogs or, you know, whoever it is. Um, you know, other other people will be, and there's just always that glimmer of sanity. Other people will be sad if I'm not here. Yeah. Um that's so the biggest thing. Yeah. I'll, like I'll I've, try, I I I'll try to make it through. I definitely have a nice nice family. That would that would be very sad if I wasn't. So I can't give up just yet. It's yeah. <laughs> And then usually okay, usually once we make it through there then things start gradually slowly improving. So Oh, I'm absolutely at that midlife crisis range, right? Where like <laughs> I'm like early 40s so it's like oh okay you know like it's it's about time for that midlife crisis range but you know like i i don't feel like i've gotten my life to a point where it's really a i deserve to have a crisis even because it's like it, it's been the same you know like it's been the same like i've i've had like small short events but it's not like i've been married for 20 years and my life is coming to an end like i've never had right a serious relationship. I like, I, I tried to have this child with this woman and now she's back living in Boston. Like I, it, like it, it's just, you know, I, I tried, Yeah. <laughs> but it just, it just didn't work out the way I wanted to. It just, it just hasn't, but it's, it's not, that doesn't mean that I'm just supposed to give up. Exactly. It, it, 
Exactly. I, I'm not, I refuse to do that or fall into that. You try and you try again. So what happened with the comedy? You tried that. I did. And, and, you know, it might've worked out if, um, I wouldn't have gotten so addicted to Xanax, but, uh, so the first couple times I did comedy, I, I, I really, I really did well. It was an open mic in LA and, and, and I really did well. I killed it. Like people liked it. It was funny. Um, but I was on Xanax those two times. And then, so the third time I come in, um, and I really hadn't done any comedy here in, in Phoenix. Like I'm, I'm sure there is some, but like I was, my goals were LA. Yeah. Um, so, but, but like the third and fourth time I I did it and I had just done too much. And then I was incoherent. I just, I just wasn't mm. like, even like, you couldn't even like, I just yeah. had done just slurry. If you do too much Spanx, believe me, you become incoherent. Um, and that's where I was at. So like the, the last couple of times I did it, uh, it was just, yeah, I was a mess. I was a complete mess. And it was just, it was like, okay, it's time to go to rehab and try to figure something else out for your life because this is this is not this is not what's meant for you you know like if you, if you have to like go the route of you know like xanax and alcohol to perform then this isn't your route yeah but it's a different route than all, all of a sudden it's, it's come like full circle it's like now i can use those those things and be more sure of myself of what I'm speaking about when I do public speak and that I can actually be out there like helping people. It's it's not just, I don't have the pressure of making people laugh. It's right. a big difference. Like it's a big difference of like the bonus inspiring when you do people. When you're speaking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't immediately tell you're inspiring people when you're like, when you're talking, but you can definitely tell if you've made them laugh. Right. You know, like, so so it's a different kind of, it's very interesting how it's all worked out, but yeah, but, but yeah, the it's, it's fascinating that it's, it's worked out the way it, it, it has because I'm, I'm now back, I'm, I'm writing, I have a finished book and you know, it's funny and I use a lot of my comedic background and I'm, I'm fluent in movie quotes. So if you like movies, <laughs> you're going to like this book. I'm telling you right now, there's, there's, there's all kinds of references not just comedically but insightfully to you know like things yeah. like you know batman and kind of bring that into like you know what does that mean like on a on an emotional level like well, what is it like to be batman even though he's a fictional character like sure. you know what batman went through was 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 very you know inspirational for me like like you know like he, he saw his like let's say there was an instance where i'm sure there and there sure has been there's been yeah. a child that's seen his parents, you know, killed in front of him, you know, like, yeah. and how that affected him. And so Batman and the villains of Batman is, are play a big part in the, uh, in the book, certainly, but cool. it's, it's just interesting to see where things all come around to. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the cool thing about life is that you can have an idea of what you want to do, but you have no idea where life is going to take you. Mm -hmm. Like I never in a million years, like I, I, I have a business that that's my day job. So I'm a Reiki master teacher and intuitive coach. And I do readings for people like never, ever thought I would run a business that was never on my bucket list to do. Um, and podcasts, well, podcasts weren't even invented when I was a kid, but <laughs> I want to have a podcast when I get older. <laughs> yeah. But like, this is never think like it just things happen and you're like, yes, this is what I need to do. This is what fills me up. This is what's really important for me to do. And you just encounter them as you live, as you grow, as you learn new things. And that's, I think what makes life worth living, you know, is, is the whole, uh, surprise aspects of it because like you said if you're just married to the same person working the same job like doing the doing the grind it it's not fulfilling you're in the program like you've programmed we're all programs right like yeah. you can't you you know like a computer without a program is a paperweight 
we all have to have a fucking program. So it's like, what, you know, like the thing is like consciousness is like, what am I programmed with? What am I like, what are like, it's just to constantly ask yourself questions. It's like, what am I programmed with? Okay. Like, what am I doing? Like, is this the best? Like, you know, it's just, it's just, for me, it's just constantly ask myself questions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, we're, we're all programmed with something and we can't mm-hmm. be programmed with nothing. So. Right. Yeah. I like that. I like that analogy. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, anyways, thank you so much for being here. Oh, um, no problem. And yeah, it was great talking to you and I look forward to checking out your book. Um, and- yes, I'm going to get that going. Yep. I've got the proofreading sessions. Like I'm trying to jump ahead of it before I release it, I suppose. Must be done. Must be done. Must. Yes. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. Thank you for listening. Remember that you are loved. You are worthy. You are valuable. You are meant for more and that it really does get better. If you are in crisis, there are numbers that you can call or text to get the help that you need. That information for Canada and the U.S. is in the description below each episode. If you are in immediate crisis, please call 911. We love you, and I hope you'll listen again.